Hey everyone! I don't know why you'd be watching this if you don't know that my name is Sam, but my name is Sam! Um, so I have a bunch of stuff coming up from work, for work, uh, late this week and then earlier next week we have our conference, so I wanted to do a video that was a little bit less uh, required thought, I guess. Um, so I had asked on Instagram if there was like, I think this is going to be kind of along the same speed as like Sam's sort of bookish thoughts, um, and probably go off on some sort of rant or something like that. But, um, I had asked, is there anything that you want to know, like what my favorite is, uh, for the like 10 people that watch. So, um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. I'm also filming on an iPad, which I've never filmed before because I need my phone to like read the questions. So like, sorry if this is bad quality, but like, it's 2019 of all the problems that's a big first world one so we'll just we'll just survive okay okay uh so the first question i had was from um reading is a virus um but she asked favorite pizza or music yeah favorite pizza sorry but fight me the best frozen pizza is dr udkers okay i don't know if you guys have them outside of canada I actually never even thought of that. Um, their best one is the mushroom. They have a chocolate one too, which I've never actually tried. But they have the best pizza. Thin crust pizza is better, okay? Fight me, but that's true. And I think my favorite, like, delivery pizza, oh, I should put this back in the freezer now, uh, is, I, I've never actually seen them outside of Alberta. Um, I really, randomly discovered them when I moved to Alberta originally, um, in, in a summer a couple years ago, and it's called Panago Pizza. They had, they got rid of it. I'm so disappointed. They had a butter chicken pizza. And I dead ass, when I moved away from where I was living in Alberta to go back to school and grad school, I took the Greyhound bus from Alberta to Ontario and then flew from Ontario to no back to Nova Scotia because flights are insanely expensive inside Canada. And um, I dead ass ordered a large butter chicken pizza and got on the, like the Greyhound for like a three day bus ride and just ate the pizza. And I, I was that douchebag who got on a bus at like 10 p.m. and sat down with like like very smelly, like it's butter chicken sauce, right? And just like looked at the person beside me. I was like, what? Fight me. Like, if this is what I'm, I'm, I'm on a bus with for three days with people who probably haven't watched, who have no concept of personal space, people who love to manspread, I'm going to have a freaking pizza with me, okay? If you have noticed, I've been on a K-pop binge for the last, like, year, courtesy of BTS. Um, I, I think generally, like, I like pop or, like, folky music. I do enjoy hip-hop. I don't tend to like r and I don't tend to like a lot of, um like exclusive rap stuff I like when like raps are featured in but like I don't know I just find I like I guess it's easier to say like who I don't like I detest people like Justin Bieber I hate his music um Shawn Mendes I like some of his stuff Camila Cabello I find her stuff incredibly overplayed and annoying I don't I don't hate her I just don't listen to Beyonce I feel like I hear enough of her stuff just by like osmosis of being on this planet because it plays everywhere I like Zara Larsson she's like Swedish pop but I like a lot of BTS's stuff um, but I've been getting into just K-pop more in general, but I found that I like a lot of like the more like are like a hip-hop leaning pop stuff So like the girl group CLC, I freaking love their stuff. Um, I really love the girl group Exid E-X-I-D, I think that's how you pronounce it. I love their stuff. Oh, Ailey, she's a Korean pop star I just like discovered her a couple months ago and then she had a comeback. It was so good. A tease. Oh my god Okay, they're gonna be the next big group like after when BTS goes on hiatus for military A tease is gonna come in like I just know it. Okay, some some agency in like like Korea is I think it's is it SM Entertainment has put together this group called um Super M the logo that they did when they released I don't know who did it but I don't think it was someone who was English speaking natively because like they underlined the U so when I see things underlined I drop that and when you when you drop when you drop the U it just says sperm so they're a group that they took like the popular band members from other groups in their label and made them like a super group. They're calling them like the Avengers of K-pop. They're trying to go after the American market, basically hoping like BTS will go on hiatus soon. And I just don't think it's going to go well. But also like sperm, like friend. Like, I live in Alberta, and, like, I told you this is going to go off deep end really quickly. I live in Alberta, and we have our conservative political party here. It's called the United Conservative Party, and their abbreviation is UCP. 
Like, it's just too easy. Dreamcatcher, girl, K. Okay. If Dreamcatcher is like K-pop rockish, if you are like, mm, it's a little too bubblegum poppy for me for with um like BTS and stuff, look, Google Dreamcat or YouTube Dreamcatcher. They're so good. There's I think there's seven member like girl group. They don't play any instruments, but it's a lot of like rocker-ish leaning stuff. It's really good. I can't get Piri Piri out of my head or what. It's so good. Everglow, girl, like they're all over my timeline everywhere because... Everglow is amazing. I love them. I, I really hope they're going to take away like Blackpink's kind of position in a global market and get YG to actually get their life together because um, Everglow could really make a go for it. Card is a group. K-A-R-D is a K-pop co-ed group. I wish there were more co-ed groups in K-pop. I think they're the only active one right now because I feel like it gives you more vocal range too. Like having to be able to do those darker, those uh, heavier notes, which generally men have a um, better vocal range for. And then women with the higher notes too. Not that they can't do both, but like, and also like having the the capability of doing like duets and all that stuff. I don't know why they don't do more co-ed groups. I feel like that has more like marketability too, that you can hit people who like girl groups and boy groups too. Like remember the popularity of S Club 7? Like they were my childhood. I want more of that. Stray Kids. Stray Kids and Twice are probably the last few that I'm mentioning. Stray Kids is another like gr uh, boy group that uh, again K-pop. They do tend to do a little bit darker stuff. They've tried like a couple like bo cute boy pop stuff. It doesn't seem to hit with me well. But like Myro is like one of my favorite songs ever. Twice is like Korea's K-pop, like their the country's K-pop group. I really like them, and they're coming back. I think in like two days or something like that. They might be they actually might be back by the time this video goes up. Wow, I'm already rambling so fast. Um, uh, but uh, they have a comeback called like Feel Special. I like really went down the deep end when they released Fancy a couple months ago. At first I heard it and I was like, what is this auto-tune mess? And then I listened to it again and I was like, wait, who's this girl? And then I found out like it's it's Mina and then she went on like anxiety like hiatus and like she's coming back now. And I'm like balls deep in the group now. Okay, for lack of a better term. But yeah, I like Red Velvet too. They're all right. They kind of hit or miss with some of their stuff, but I really liked Zimzilla Boom and Pickaboo. But I don't like their new one that was just too girl crushy or too um, like cutesy for me. But yeah, K-pop. I've just gone like such in the deep end of that. And like I got introduced to it because of BTS who are still like my number one. But like it's actually interesting seeing the range and the concept. And now I'm like all in on like the K-pop industry chaos. And like I know all about like the corruption and soul police forces. And like it's interesting if you're ever interested in getting involved in that or just like kind of dipping your toes in watch DKDK TV they're like a YouTube channel there's two guys and if there's stuff that they know isn't going to translate at an international level like when there's oh my god someone so is dating and like in Korea like that's a big thing that idols generally don't date because it tends to like hit the, the entertainment company's stock prices in a negative way um which I'm like why that doesn't make sense to me so they explain things or they'll go through Korean songs <gasps> I forgot to mention Chungha. Oh my god. Chungha. Guys, she's like, her and Ailey, like, female solo. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? I'm like, it's like, ugh, I, okay, I need to just cut myself off here. Okay, um, someone said movies. Okay, I am someone who, like, I have a hard time, because my favorite movie of all time is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I know that movie hasn't aged well. <laughs> But that is a movie that I have been able to, it's like Harry Potter. I've separated like it's con like it's original, like the, the, the piece of art with all of like the problems with it. It's just like I pretend JK Rowling's Twitter doesn't exist and she doesn't say the shit that she does um, because Harry Potter is just something different. I'm kind of the same way at Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like that, like I'm a John Hughes, was it? The, I like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Well, I love that movie. The Breakfast Club, I adore that movie too. Underappreciated movies, easy A, okay? That movie is Emma Stone's like, oh, that movie is freaking amazing amazing i love easy a so much uh crazy rich asians that's like one of like the best film adaptations of all time i know there's all the drama with the sequel but like deadpool fucking deadpool man they i am so happy ryan reynolds like dug down and was like no is it ryan reynolds no yeah ryan reynolds <laughs> confusing him with Ryan Gosling for a second. <laughs> the problems of having two hot Canadian Ryans. That movie was just, I'm so happy Ryan Reynolds pushed forever for them to be like, no, you're gonna make Deadpool the right way or I'm not making it and I have this contract. Like, so like, you pick fam and I'm so glad they waited and did, did it as as they did because it's so popular now because they did that. I wish more people would look and be like, hey, why aren't our adaptations ever like going well? Look at the new X-Men movie. Like, hmm, maybe we should stick to the actual plot shit that made the movies and, and story popular in the beginning anyways, huh? I think animated movies like of all time favorite would either be Road to El Dorado or Anastasia. I like The Emperor's New Groove too. Um, I th oh, Tangled. Oh, my God. 
I don't love animated movies, but there's some that when I love them, they're like cult for me. Oh, Hocus Pocus too. I always watch that every Halloween. That's another one. I think someone asked me like my favorite TV show too. I pretty religiously rewatch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, The Good Place, and Charmed. Um, and sometimes Scrubs. I go off and on on those. Those are, Scrubs is one that kind of like, I don't actually you know what, considering how old it was, Scrubs didn't age all that badly. They had a pretty diverse cast for the time period. I rewatch, I go on binges of Friends rewatches every once in a while and The Office, but like The Good Place and Brooklyn Nine-Nine are like kind of up there as like, god tier book um tv shows for me um someone asked me what my favorite k drama was too um and 2k1 p1 um they asked me what my favorite k drama or tv series was so tv series is answered i actually have never watched a k drama i kind of wanted to look into watching the i think it's called huarang um the one where uh, t uh or i guess it's in, in v slash tay from bts um acted in it for a little while i haven't actually i don't even know where i would try to watch that stuff like there's probably like a north american like subscription platform somewhere to watch k dramas or something i just have no idea where i would put if you know comment down below on what k dramas i should start watching but i have a hard time watching like dramas where the acting is bad but they think they're acting really well and i know that's kind of difficult in korea because a lot of actors are former k-pop idols and then they age out after essentially military service because apparently they just lose value according to koreans um once they hit like late 20s 30s, 30s and then they switch into acting a lot of them so like a lot of them aren't necessarily actors <laughs> they just get into that because they can't be stage idols anymore right so like um but she suggested one or two to me i like historical ones i know i i heard like for a while they tried to adapt some like um there was like a, a korean like legend that was supposed to be like the game of thrones and they adapted they spent like DK DK TV talked about it I think a, a, a couple months ago and like they sunk so much money into it and like everyone I've heard that was watching it was like it's bad like the effects the plot the acting the characters the costume it's all really bad like we don't know what they did with the money so then I was like why do I only hear about K dramas of being like ridiculous uh, for your favorites favorite non booktuber youtuber okay there's a couple that I watch I lot I watch a lot of commentary on YouTube um so someone that I tend to binge a lot is Smoky Glow so she does a lot of topics not only discussing like makeup and she does a lot of uh, makeup content um like she does like talk and like get to get like talk and doing her makeup I like watching that stuff I feel like her stuff is very accessible too as someone who like I like toy around with makeup but I'm never going to be like Jeffree Star makeup right so she does things that I feel like are a little bit more accessible for someone like me but she's also um, doing it back she's finishing her degree in social work and I feel like a lot of things we've been talking about on YouTube uh, recently with like child laws because there's so many big like family channels and like the ace family hot mess that entire disgusting family and then there's that like toy George, is it George's toy reviews or something like that and then they're talking about like trying like why don't we have child labor laws because we have them for actors why don't we have them for YouTubes because these people are using their children and at that age can you consent to something like that and like what are the restrictions so she's talking a lot about that and a lot about the whole Danielle Cohn lying about being uh, I mean she's 13 we all know and then like she was date like this whole creepy situation her it looks like her mom was forcing her to date older men it's just like really disgusting um and she just talks about a lot of really interesting things and I, I find that she's a pretty unbiased um and she always like kind of backs things up and she seems to like wait a day or two after drama to like think about things and see how other people are reacting to get multiple point of views to balance out um I also oh who is um other than k-pop stuff <laughs> Uh, let me open my YouTube here and just see. Uh, DK DK TV is one that I watch every single video they upload. Um, they're they just do really interesting content. Um, Philip DeFranco, I watch him every day. He's my news source most of the time. Uh, I've I watched a lot of British YouTubers. Um, so originally I got to Jack May. I don't really watch his content anymore. Um, but he blew up like really like I think a year or two ago because he did the Zoella like um, advent calendar thing, which was a really funny video. Um, and then kind of through that I got into I'm Alex and I Nabber and um, Will and E and then and then a bunch of them are BTS fans and like I Nabber always has a Jim and Funko pop in the background. I just love that. Um, I can take I tend to like watch a couple episodes at a time with them and then kind of move on and then come back a couple like later jenna marbles i remember her when she, when her first video how to trick people into thinking you're good looking came out i loved that video and then i watched a couple of her videos and it was very ranty and she used like term like i think she used the f i don't want to use that word but like the like the f and the 
using the word gay and all that stuff and like the way we would a long time ago and then I, I came back to her a couple years later and she'd really really changed her content and like she did a lot of lists for a while of like you know girl what girls actually do in the bathroom and all that sort of stuff and those were those were enjoyable too and then her and Julian Julian Solomito is her boyfriend um I just consider them married at this point um they uh they always put out good content they do a lot of interesting cooking videos too they are vegan so that is somewhat interesting as someone who's like i'm not vegan i don't think i'll ever be vegan but trying to eat like meatless d certain days or just seeing different recipes and how people make simulations of of a lot of like regular food is always interesting and they have all their dogs too so um yeah favorite place to shop i don't know what sort of shopping <laughs> Um, I'm a cheap person, okay? Like putting it that way. So I like going to secondhand stores. When I was living in Southern Ontario, there was Plato's Closets a lot of places. I loved going to those. We have a value village here and it's like, that's kind of it and it's not great. Um, I think for like, I don't know, man. Like I, I'm, I, I never really go into stores knowing exactly what I want. I'm just like, I just know that I should probably get new clothes like for the season or, you know, I have a bunch of stuff with holes in it. So I'll generally go to Marshall's a lot. I don't know if you have those outside of Canada, but they're like, oh, I don't know if you have winners either, but they're like our discount, like brand name-ish store. I really like their stuff. Um, and, um, Pennington's normally they're generally like a plus size. I don't fit most of their stuff. I'm in that weird position of not being like, I'm kind of big for regular size, but then plus sizes is just too big for me but I normally find stuff out uh, on their websites as well um but I'm someone who still buys my clothes in stores um I do wish we had a Torrid where I lived we don't have any of their stuff um I've never bought full price stuff from Torrid because they're astronomically overpriced but their clearance section is always really good um so yeah I don't really like buy brand name clothing most of my money goes to like bookstores and Starbucks anyways <laughs> um favorite part of your home hmm I don't know. I live in a rented basement apartment that like is pretty inexpensive for my area and I have a good landlord. So I mean like I think the favorite part of my home is that like it's not really a physical part. I have a really good landlord which is not something that I've really constantly honestly ever had. I've had people who are really late to cash checks and they ch cash them all at once and like I've had like landlords that we had to call the cops on. I've had holes in floors that you could see into like from the kitchen into the bathroom and like just like probably mold in them and then I moved here and I really really lucked out. I moved to this area when the vacancy rate was quite high because it's used to be it still does have a lot of oil industry but not as much so when the oil industry kind of cut out here for a little bit um there was a high vacancy rate like 20 percent and in alberta it's legal to do a thing called pet rent yeah that's a thing here um my landlord was like no just this is what your rate is it covers everything except internet and um I, he's a really good landlord. He, if there's any issues that I have, he'll, he'll be here within a day or two to fix it. Um, and he let, he does a lot of DIY fixes, but like the place is, is good. It's comfortable. I've never had issues with him. He's really respectful and polite and the place is always, you know, kept up to date. Um, I just wish I had a fence in my backyard, but I have a really good neighbor where I live geographically too. So I think like just, I lucked out. I moved from across, I moved to Alberta from Nova Scotia. I never saw this place in person. My landlord had never met my dogs and he's just like, okay, we'll see how it goes. We'll do a, a three month lease or six month lease when you get here. Favorite place you have ever been? Ooh, I've only ever been out of Canada once. Um, no, that's not true. I've only ever been out of North America once. I went to the States off and on when I was a kid for hockey tournaments and such. Um, but so the only time I've ever left North America was in second year, between second and third year university in undergrad. When I went to Germany, I went to Berlin for two weeks for a school class, which that was the greatest class ever. Um, it was like the coolest experience ever. And I don't think that I can go back to Europe. I hope I get to eventually. Um, but I don't think it'll ever top getting to, to, to experience that the first time of just seeing different way, way of lifestyle of things not being open on Sunday mornings right away. We had to wait for like the Starbucks and all these places to open because they don't open till like 10 a.m. Like the transit system was so much more like logically like organized. It was clean. Like the, the, the energy thing. I had never seen this before. But I feel like it's coming across like more in North America now. So this was in 2012, it would have been, I think, 2012. 2012 or 2014 I can't remember 20 I think 2012 um but like our room like you, it, you the lights in the power in your room would only work if your key card was in there and if you left your room you normally took your key card right so you couldn't run things in your room without being there so you wouldn't waste energy and like 
why don't we have that shit here? Like, why? That was just, it's just, like, the smallest little things. And seeing, like, so much more emphasis put on, like, mom and pop shops and, and having the ability to travel so quickly to, like, all of these other countries surrounding you, to getting free access to museums, like the Holocaust Museum, uh, well, the Holocaust Memorial is outside, but, like, getting into, go into certain museums, really everything we went to was free except for one place because it was privately run. Like, it was just so interesting. I, I, I definitely want to go back to Europe. I definitely want to go back to Germany and visit other other cities in it as well. But like just everything made sense in Germany. I got there and was like, I never want to go back to North America. Everything here makes sense. What is your favorite non-bookish item that you have recently bought? Oh, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. So I work in like an open space office. I have a cubicle. But like the back doesn't have walls anywhere. It's a big back space. So at days, it's like th there's temperature control, but there's no way to actually enforce it. So like on my side of the building in the mornings, it's hot because the other side of the building is cold and like because of where the sun and everything is. So I'm hot in my cubicle for the first like couple hours at work. So I was like, screw it. And I bought for like 10 bucks at Shoppers Drug Mart. Do you guys have Shoppers Drug Mart outside of Canada? Oh my god, I've never even thought about this stuff. Um, but like, this little mini desk fan, it like plugs into your computer, so just like, I turn it, oh, it's not gonna turn off. Why did I press the button? Um, yeah, it's just a little smitty, little small thing. I don't know why, it just makes me so happy every morning when I'm like, oh my god, it's so hot, and then I can just like, press that. Oh, it has batteries too, I never even noticed that on the bottom. Oh, I had someone ask me what my favorite sports were. Um, I played hockey a lot growing up. I played a lot of sports. I was a very active kid. I played, or I was judo. I was a green belt and then they were like, we can't raise you up any more belts for a couple years because we don't want to teach you chokeholds at your age. And I was like, boo! And I left. Um, <laughs> but I was in judo for quite a few years. I actually really enjoyed it. I played hockey competitively for, uh, until I was in fourth year undergrad so until I was 21 I was a goalie um I played baseball and fast pitch like underhand and fast pitch for a couple of years too which I enjoyed um and we've won quite we've won quite a few awards for that I got like luckily just ended up on a team that was like already like notoriously like the best in like the province and everything um and I played tennis for quite a while when I was younger I was really bad at it but I enjoyed it some sport I've never been able to get into is like winter ones out like in outdoor skiing snowboarding all that stuff I'm so into prone but like just a big fat no um and swimming I got swimmer's ear so I can never really like I enjoy swimming like leisurely but like I get swimmer's ear like as soon as I go under the water so like that sucks so I've never been able to do that another thing I constantly guess ask because we live in Canada is like favorite Canadian foods um I like this is one that I d legitimately don't know if you guys I feel like some places in the states have them because they're so close to the border but like puts in some people will say like it's gross it's so good if you make it right you don't use shredded cheese you use cheese curds and you use proper freaking gravy none of this like cheese sauce with like meat topping that's not poutine okay poutine <laughs> is potato like and they have to be like those those hefty ones I don't want to see none of those like shoestring fries those are going to be soggy within 10 seconds but like normal like rustically cut like thick like fries are really good with poutine um all dressed chips I know most of you guys in the states don't have that I don't even know how all dressed and ketchup chips are the best and a specific kind of all dressed I'll put them right here I think it's president's choice they're called like the extreme okay ruffles used to be really good in Canada and now they don't put fucking any seasonings they taste like plain chips they've cheaped out hard and then they're more expensive whereas like president's choice has these extreme flavors and basically all dressed is like everything but the kitchen sink seasoning it's like salt and vinegar ketchup barbecue all of these like vin things poured together on a chip it's delicious we also have a thing in canada called storm chips which i don't know that americans really know <laughs> i mean you guys get storms in the winter but it's like this company specifically i think they're based in like um in the east coast but they're a kettle chip company and they have a bag called like storm chips or whatever where it's literally just a mixture of all their chips and people always get them when we're like gonna get a blizzard and we're expecting to be shut down like this the roads are gonna be like kind of unavailable for a couple days um we always get them that they're always sold out whenever i go to the store to get those um i've only ever seen them like pretty consistently shelved in the east coast so that's why i'm wondering um you also also don't have miss vicky's chips which i I don't know how you function like that, but their sour cream and onion are freaking amazing. And they have a sweet chili one too. That is really good. Uh, Nanaimo bars. I don't think you guys really have those. 
their fatty, their diabetes as a dessert, basically. That's what it is. But it's coconut and chocolate base, um, like kind of a crumble. And then it's like a custard. You can make whatever custard. The mint one is the best one, but I've seen like plain custard, raspberries, all those ones. And then like a chocolate shell on top. Um, it is pure diabetes, but they're so good. One question someone did ask me was like, what is my favorite piece of clothing? Girl, I am a basic white woman, okay? If you wear anything other than leggings, you're a fool. I don't know what to do with you. Like, jeans are uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure they're also, like, just, I associate them with patriarchy because they're uncomfortable. There's also jeans now being sold without pockets. What are you people doing? But I mean, like, they're coming out with leggings with pockets now, too. Like, I feel like leggings, and then, was it two years ago or something like that? Some guy, I think it was in Nova Scotia, maybe you didn't hear about this, but someone had written, like, a letter to the newspaper in, like, I think it was, like, Nova Scotia, near Halifax, and some guy was like, I don't know why women are wearing leggings, they're not attractive. And everyone's like, we're not wearing them for your attraction, they're fucking comfortable. So then all these women, like, walked near the person's neighborhood, like, campaigning, essentially, like, a, like a big thing over... Oh, one last thing. Yes, I did remember it. Someone had asked me what's my favorite thing about being a librarian. Honestly, getting to fight with people. I know that's the weirdest thing of all time. I am a petty human and I'm also someone who has a difficulty letting something go if I know that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So when I go into like the comment sections, I know that's never a good idea. Going on the comment sections of like a CBC article. Um, oh, I don't know. If you don't know what CBC is, just Google it. Like, they're a big news organization in Canada. But, like, there's always people under there in their, like, tinfoil hats or these, like, super conservative people that you read that and you're like, oh my god, Canada's doomed. And then the vast majority of people just don't go in the comment sections because they're like, no one goes on there other than, like, gremlins, right? So, like... <laughs> I honestly love and going in there and being like well like just educating people and then being like all right yeah sure whatever I'm like okay here's all these links and like flood them with references I also love being that person I hate it but I also love being that person when someone uses the wrong your and then calls you stupid so I mean like I've been in there when people are I'm like oh well like whatever and then someone's like you're dumb and I'm like asterisk re you're using the wrong your get basic like grade one grammar if you're gonna insult my intelligence at least like go for it. Like afterwards, whatever. Call me fat, whatever. But like use basic proper grammar structure. That's probably my favorite thing. I'm not like the greatest person at spelling and grammar all the time. But like if I'm going to come at someone for being stupid, I'm going to make sure I spell everything correctly. <laughs> I know that's a really petty thing, but it's just like fun because people think you're like wizards and like hold all the power of information. And like they kind of back off when you say stuff because you're like, I'm a librarian. But yeah. I know that's a very weird thing to enjoy. I mean, uh, I mean, like, it's cool to help people and all, but, like, other than that, like, libraries' jobs are basically just, like, desperately asking government institutions to properly fund you, and they don't. Like, that's really our life existence. But, yeah. So, that's everything. I have nothing to link in this video, I don't think. So, the only thing will be the description will be my social medias. And, yeah, if you want many more of these favorite video things, then, like, put questions down below or DM me on Instagram. I also exist on Litzy. I have a Twitter, I just really don't tend to use it other than to like be like, hey, a video's up in case some of you use Twitter because Twitter is a cesspool. Fight me, but like the only thing I go on there is for BTS content to like their posts. That's basically my Twitter existence. Oh, maybe that's a good one. What is my favorite social media platform? Uh, I mean, Facebook is the devil, but I like it because it has access to the TBR Beyond group, which I use a lot. Um, but I think my favorite app for books is Litzy. Um, because it's like Goodreads, but like if Goodreads didn't suck balls, <laughs> I wish more people use it. I feel like it's just, um, it's streamlined. I get more content that I, that I enjoy and it's much more book focused and I'm not feeding into Amazon using it. Right. Well, now, any right now, anyways, Lord, Lord knows they'll buy it eventually, but yeah. So I don't know. Bye.